Family Home Entertainment. From our family to yours, there's something special for everyone. At www.familyhomeent.com. From Artisan and Family Home Entertainment. Far above the Arctic Circle, 5,000 miles from civilization. A 20,000 year old question has finally been raised. There is a very large animal. It's not a movie. It's not fantasy. It's the incredible real life adventure of raising an ancient beast. This June, Journey Far. Dig deep. Think big. As science attempts the impossible. Raising the Mammoth, a Discovery Channel home video premiere event. Available for the first time on video and DVD, wherever videos are sold. From Artisan and Family Home Entertainment. This April, Artisan and Family Home Entertainment are going wild with five new Discovery and Animal Planet titles that offer astonishing answers to some of nature's most confounding questions. Why dogs smile and chimpanzees cry. How animals do that. And why Steve is so wild. About crocodiles. Boy, crikey, she's a gnarly little sheila. Explore the many moods of the animal kingdom. In Discovery Channel's award-winning Why Dogs Smile and Chimpanzees Cry. Narrated by Academy Award nominee Sigourney Weaver. Available for the first time on both video and DVD. Then uncover some of nature's best-kept secrets in Discovery Channel's amazing How Animals Do That. Also for the first time ever on video. And from Down Under, come three Animal Planet adventures from the outrageous Crocodile Hunter series. Wow! Steve's greatest crocodile captures, Steve's most dangerous adventures, and Steve's story, the astounding tale of how it all began. Available separately or collect them all in a money-saving three-pack or DVD. This April, you can own these five Discovery Channel and Animal Planet Video real-life adventures on video and DVD wherever videos are sold. From Artisan and Family Home Entertainment. Every year, 
A thousand fearsome tornadoes sweep across the American plains. Yet these awesome beasts of nature are themselves hunted by amateur chasers and by professional meteorologists who stalk them throughout the tornado season, intent on capturing them on video and studying the science of tornadoes. At the same time that trained meteorologists are out on the plains, other chasers are looking for thrills and the awe-inspiring emotion of witnessing such weather giants in action. The more that science learns about tornadoes, the more we can predict how they form and move. The ultimate goal, to save lives. So at the top of the chasing hierarchy are the scientists equipped with the latest Doppler radar. It measures the speed of wind and tornado debris movement toward or away from the radar dish. Putting the Doppler on wheels takes radar close to a tornado. This chase team from the University of Oklahoma is led by Josh Werman with navigator Frank Bush. The radar truck is driven by Herbert Stein a veteran of tornado chasing. Well, Doppler radar is one of the most powerful tools to um, look inside the storms and see if they're rotating, see how intense the storms are. We can also plot exactly what their movements are. With the mobile radar, of course, we can go exactly where we want to and, and, and target the particular storm we want to. What we try to do with two Doppler radars is collect something called dual Doppler. A single Doppler radar can only detect motions towards or away from it, and it can't see any of the crossways motion. And if we want to actually see a wind vector, which means wind speed and wind direction, um, then we need to look at the same area from two different vantage points. The team's five-year mission to chase tornadoes has gathered data on hundreds of storms. This is fairly typical. Um, some of them, if they're much stronger, in fact, look even more wrapped up. In this particular hook echo, we can see it's coiled around, and at the tip, it's very coiled, like a fern frond, and that blue spot represents the eye, or center of the tornado. Basically, we slice the radar back and forth at various altitudes through that tornado, and we can see its structure by layering these on top of each other. We can see the three-dimensional structure of that tornado. Now, at this time, this particular radar was probably 10 kilometers away from the tornado. But the other radar was much closer and was about here, looking from that direction. So we could see data from the two radars combined uh, in order to get both the wind speed and the wind direction. The goals of our studies are to try to understand the process of tornado formation or tornado genesis better. If we can establish new theories for how that happens, we hope that we can enable forecasters to make more precise warnings, which would enable more people to survive to seek shelter. South Dakota, 1998. The radar trucks are closely tracking a fast-developing tornado. Well, that's no problem. I just think if we go north, how are we going to be behind it? Just watch out for power lines coming down on the right. Ooh, Dust City. We have at least 90 meters per second winds in that tornado. It's extremely, extremely strong. I want to get ahead of it to go close. Where is it? It's back there. In remote rural areas with few roads, the team must ensure they always know an escape route. Yeah, it's got great rotation in the wall cloud. And my suggestion is that the next road we turn east, so we have a, if we have trees, and that also gives us an escape route. And turning east? It's right there, it's really spectacular. Okay. It's not a good uh, condensation funnel, but we have excellent rotation. Oh yeah, look at that, jeez. It's not getting too close, otherwise we'll get blocked as we go the other way. Well, we could go right. beyond those. I think just beyond, just, just beyond this hill. Yeah, actually, 100 meters off this little dip here. Right, right now. Thank you. The Fujita, or F scale, grades tornadoes on a scale from 1 to 5. This monster F4 was the first killer tornado the team had studied. It devastated the small town of Spencer, and six deaths here deeply affected team driver Herbert Stein. I've been chasing for years and seen a lot of gigantic tornadoes, but most of them happen out in the plains where they're not going to hit anything. Then when you get a tragedy like Spencer, 
last year where the town was wiped out and May 3rd this year, a lot of people dying. It was very sobering because it caused so much tragedy and devastation. It reinforces why we're doing this to further signs with tornadoes and to perhaps prevent tragedies just like this. What we hope to do is similar to what paleontologists do, in that they collect certain bones or fossils from one animal and then other bones from another animal, and then they piece them all together to make the entire dinosaur. By piecing together our different data sets, we hope to make a better picture of what the entire life cycle of a large tornado looks like from birth until death. But a year later in 1999, more detailed data comes from a chase in northern Nebraska. It's late afternoon when they run into dangerous hail while tracking supercell thunderstorms that may spawn tornadoes. With twilight approaching, Josh Werman is anxious to get both Doppler radar trucks into position. Yeah, it's a very interesting time in the storm right now, so please redeploy quickly. The storm is powerful enough for softball-sized hail, and by 7 p.m., the fast rotating wall cloud begins to drop funnels. Chasing tornadoes after dark is always dangerous, but the team are determined to keep going and collect all the data they can from this powerful storm. Just a few hundred yards away, they spot a spectacular lightning lit tornado on the left side of the road. Suddenly, another menacing tornado touches down, this time on the right side of the road. For the university team, this was to be the last chase of 1999, but it filled in another piece of the tornado jigsaw for chase team leader Josh Worman. With the data we've collected this year, we are much, much closer to having complete data sets on the entire life history of tornadoes. In recent years, tornado chasing has become a popular vacation sport with hundreds of amateur enthusiasts. For just a few days and with some help from a team of professional chasers, a vacation in June 1999 was the first taste of tornado chasing for three young women from South Dakota. Darla took to the wheel with her friends Debbie and Susan. So far, there's been no sign of any tornadoes. And now in Nebraska, on the last day of their chase vacation, they are getting anxious they may never see a tornado. Trip County, that's where we're at. We're only like 30 miles south of Trip County. Severe thunderstorms, we're in it. <coughs> Sherry County. But after days of frustration, their luck was about to change. This one, Deb. It's right out here, the cornered one. The one that's going up like a cone. That's good. That's what we want is that. Oh my god, look at Darla! Oh my god, it is it touching is down. Coming. Look at that, oh Susan. It is touching down. On the distant horizon, they glimpse oh a tornado god. heading away from them. There you go. I got goosebumps. Oh my god. Oh, son of a god. Oh, look at it. It's coming down. It's coming down. 
down. It's it is sure as heck farther. is. There it goes. They are determined to get much closer to the tornado. You sure this isn't coming this way? But a more experienced chaser tells them they are running into danger. But running away is a decision they soon start to regret. No one sure didn't stay on the ground very long. No, but it sure got wide when it was back, back went back that way. Are those clouds still rotating over there, Susan? No, oh, not so bad, I don't think. I don't see what the big scare was. You want to see the debris flying around and stuff? you got to get close to them. That I've never seen. Well, that's what I, <laughs> I want to really see. I saw that in Wichita, and that was an awesome tornado. That's what I want to see today. I don't want to see it from 30 miles away or 10 oh, miles, 30 miles away, away or 5 miles away. I want to see it 80 feet away. Look at you guys. Look at that cloud. No, you right straight behind us. It's forming. It's rotating. Do you see it? Uh-uh. I can't see through these windows. I can't. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> Clouds are rotating. This is ridiculous. The storm is that way. Are we going to get, like, on a paved road and go back north? Darla, the driver, is in radio contact with the chaser who warned them to run. He's offered to guide them away from the danger. He's going to get on a paved road and we're going to drive around. <laughs> here. I cannot believe there's a Doppler. Nightfall on the last day of the women's vacation. They've mostly enjoyed the experience. <sighs> well, it was pretty exciting. I wish, I wish we could have got kept it on longer. Yeah, yeah. If we needed to bad. I, I need to learn more about these things so I can get into it a little bit more. I'm, I'm really. I'm excited to learn more about them because, God, it's awesome. <laughs> oh, I suppose. I got a smile on my face. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make it good. Yeah, it's all right. It's all I can say is I'm just happy. <laughs> <laughs> I got to see one. <laughs> it's pretty exciting. I'm excited. I keep still thinking that there's going to be something coming I, I'm, up. It just makes me want to go chase these all the more, though. I just want to keep on chasing them. I want to come back and do this again next year. I'll be ready. More week. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Jason Persoff, a physician from Florida, is also on vacation. He's an amateur chaser with a lifelong interest in meteorology. It's his fifth tornado chase season. <laughs> Loving the mesocyclone. To see that, I just don't like. <laughs> this is great, though. This is, oh my God, this is incredible. I am so pleased we're here doing this. I mean, this is what I live for. I am just as pumped as you could possibly be. <laughs> Tripod isn't working out the way it's <laughs> supposed to. Let's call it a mechanical thing. All right, here we go. <laughs> what we're seeing here is the anvil top of a very severe uh, thunderstorm. And right behind these clouds right here, you can actually see some Mamatus clouds, which indicates instability aloft. God, that's looking good. That's looking real good. This is it. This is what we need, baby. This is it. Right here, right now. All right. How the hell are we now? This thing is beautiful. quite a bit around here but as you can see right up the side this is the mesocyclone this is what we look for in a classic supercell and you can see if you look hard enough lines in it that shows that it's rotating 
And this is a well-formed wall cloud. Now we're getting hit with hail, so we have to move forward. But you can actually see, this is where a tornado will form if it's gonna form. And this whole thing is probably 60 feet, 1,000 feet in the air. And the whole thing is rotating. It's, it's the size of a mountain. I mean, this is incredible. This is beautiful. So hopefully we'll see a tornado out of this, but we have got to get in the car. Whoa. All right, let's go. Let's go. I mean, let's go. Jason's been chasing this storm for hours with breaks to take photos. I wish we could possibly film how large this is. Which I can't. I mean, and look straight up. We actually have a... I mean, this is this is where the tornado could form, is right where we are. We, have, we are not safe. We have got to move. Despite his expertise, Dr. Jason was not as lucky as Darla, Debbie, and Susan. He never did see a tornado. But he's still happy. This has probably been the best day I've ever had uh, storm chasing, ever. Um, because the storm structure's been magnificent. You don't even need to see tornadoes. I mean, this is, this is beautiful. This is just exceptional. As well as the hundreds of amateurs, there are also experienced professional chasers out on the plains. Some have become tornado experts after studying weather phenomena for years, like wind engineer Tim Marshall. Tim has been fascinated by severe weather since childhood. Well, there are certain people like myself that are drawn to storms. We find them fascinating, we find them very interesting. We want to learn more about them. Tim's chasing expertise helps him take astonishing close-up videos of killer storms, like his film of the 1999 Oklahoma City tornado. As I saw the tornado, it was on the ground for like 80 minutes. And I was hoping that it would lift before it got to any kind of a town. And so as it crossed the interstate and went into Moore, Oklahoma, uh, I got a feeling of anger. I was mad. I was mad at Mother Nature for having to go through a town like that. Immediately after the disaster, I put on a different hat. I became the wind engineer, and I went with Texas Tech University out to survey the damage, and we went block by block surveying it, seeing what buildings were there, how were they built, how they failed, where people were. A lot of people were in bathtubs, for example, and they survived. The damage studies of Tim Marshall and other wind engineers are encouraging stronger building construction and steadily reducing tornado fatalities. Yet tornadoes are rare and unpredictable. Successful chases take planning, patience, and expert knowledge. Off to our west, we have got a storm that is brewing right now. Hopefully, it will get its act together. Right now, it's a little troubled. It's got a small rain core to it, and it's got a linear base off the back end of it. We've got some pretty good inflow from the southeast, and I like this feature up overhead. This is what they call a, an inflow band or beaver tail. It comes on in to the north side of that. So that's a good sign. That means it's trying to organize its inflow back into there. And the core is pretty stout right now. Uh, I figure, hey, it's early now. It's only five minutes to five. We've got at least three and a half hours more of daylight. So now it's a waiting game. The storm is definitely improving. If it continues to do so, we're going to have a tornado here within uh, 30 minutes. We'll just have to see. Right on cue. Tim's prediction comes true. We did have a tornado back there. You could see it off in the distance as it roped on out and uh, came on down briefly. And it kind of hung together up aloft for a little while afterwards. But it was at least a tornado we got to catch today. So you have to have a stake. We have two tornadoes on the ground simultaneously. Oh, yes! Yes! Tornadoes of every shape and size have been captured by Tim throughout his chasing career. You should stay here. 
Despite years of experience, Tim still gets carried away by the thrill of the chase. Yes, go, go, go. We love those work days. My town was hit by a tornado when I was small, and I learned fear first and to try to overcome that fear and then go out and, and actually chase tornadoes. Uh, that was difficult for me, but I've learned to overcome that and I learned to respect tornadoes. Woo Hot dog, yes! Hmm. Gosh, he's heading right for me. Well, tornado! Oh, yes! Yes! Yes, definitely horizontal! get a thunderstorm, I'm happy. If I get a severe thunderstorm, I'm really happy. And if I get a tornado, obviously I'm joyful. Possible tornado. There we go. Oh, look at this base. Look at this base. All right, tornado. Very nice, very nice tornado, very nice. 95 to 99% of the time, you don't see a tornado go out chasing and you don't come up with a tornado. The tornado is not the goal. If the tornado were the goal, you would not uh, see a tornado and then you get bored. What I like about storm chasing is to get out on the open plains and see the beauty of the sky. Other professional storm chasers share the knack of being in the right place at the right time. With 30 years of experience, Gene Moore is one of the most successful chasers. Hello? Uh, police, I want to report a tornado. Yes, sir. I'm a meteorologist. My name's Gene Moore. There's a tornado forming. It's already been down once with a debris cloud uh, just southeast of the Wagner County line on Highway 69. Okay, bye. Gene makes regular tornado reports during his chase in May 1999. We're going to, have to move on south. Let's go, let's go, let's go. You need to go faster. We're in a bind. Let's go. As the tornado sped across open country in eastern Oklahoma, Gene raced to keep pace with it, making regular stops to report on the tornado's progress to the weather authorities and to take pictures for future study. Professional chasers like Gene go anywhere a tornado is to be found. Their telephone and radio reports provide essential on-the-ground backup as massive storms like these are tracked on radar. Just to our southwest, less than a mile, got more forming, got a tornado forming here. Got debris right there beside us. A week later, and several hundred miles away, Gene has another successful chase, this time in Almina, Kansas. Like many chasers, Gene has collected a substantial library of pictures of tornadoes, storms, and other weather phenomena. He sells them via the internet, but money has never been a prime motivation. Look at that monster! Hopefully out here where it won't hurt anybody. I enjoy chasing storms, though because I enjoy nature. I think just like a sailor loves the sea, I, I enjoy the clouds and the sky and what goes on there. Absolutely stunning roll bound. Still a huge tube tornado in progress. Okay, let's see if we got another shot here. Golly. I don't know how long it lasted. Could have been 40 minutes. Wow, what a rush. Still roping out, we're out of film, out of breath. Well, that's what it's all about. 
At ground level, tornadoes appear enormous, but they're only a tiny part of storm systems 30 miles wide and 60,000 feet high. Turbulence inside is a threat to aircraft, the main cause of in-flight injuries. Thunderclouds like these are the last place that any pilot would choose to fly. Well, you can start everything up because I'm getting ready to crank up and go. Pilot Charlie Summers and his team of aerial storm chasers are trying to judge just how close to thunderclouds commercial aircraft can safely fly. A Second World War T-28 dive bomber chases the storm and will be aimed directly at the turbulent heart of the clouds. Two other aircraft are needed to carry the scientific instruments that will take measurements within the storm cloud. They follow Charlie Summers in his elderly bomber as he heads for the storm northeast of Denver. foot of the Rockies, a Doppler radar station guides the aircraft into position. Tornado chasers thousands of feet below on the ground near Denver are following the same storm system. Storm has warned tornado several times, but I'm sure I haven't seen anything. It must be about the middle of a rotation. So that's sort of the area where I think that there might be a tornado dust. You should just go out and take a look at it and see what it is. It might be. You're up at 17,000. Somewhere within the storm into which Charlie is flying is a tornado and turbulence and hail. But the T-28 is a remarkable aircraft. Its reinforced fuselage will help it survive a storm with four-inch hailstones. Once Charlie finds a safe path through the storm, the other two aircraft follow. Data from the radar systems will help find ways of spotting turbulence in these tornadic storms in time for pilots to steer clear of trouble. On this occasion, the Denver storm did no damage to Charlie Summers' plane. All the aircraft returned safely. But the aviation chasers will repeat the exercise time and time again to try and improve air safety around these seasonal tornado storms of the Central Plains. Chasing tornadoes by air is now an essential part of the complex warning system working to save lives around Oklahoma City, the heart of Tornado Alley. One of these chasers is pilot Leroy Tatum. We took off and uh, within 15 minutes of, of leaving the airport at Lawton, we saw a small tornado uh, and we figured that was, that'd be it for the day. You know, we had our tornado, we could, you know, just kind of hang around a little bit and then we'd go home and, you know, we'd be done for the day. But uh, it didn't, didn't stop there. As tornado spotter for Oklahoma's Channel 9 TV, Leroy sees more tornadoes than he really wants to. If I know that I can fly near them safely, uh, then I'll go ahead and do what's necessary for the job. But uh, given, given a choice, I'd probably just soon be doing something else that day. The same station also employs storm chasers on the ground to spy on tornadoes whichever way they twist or turn. There are two storms. Uh, this one is near Pampa, which is right off the map right here. And the other one is up here at Liberal. And uh, Meteorologist Liberal Val Castor storm chases with his wife Amy. Uh, he has an unrivaled break. reputation for passing life-saving warnings to the people right in the path of tornadoes. Uh, the Pampa storm they've got moving east at about 20 but it probably will slow down and turn more towards the southeast. 
Over years of storm chasing, Val has amassed an impressive video archive of tornado sightings. Tornado chase reports from Val Castor and from the Channel 9 helicopter go back to the same man, the station's chief meteorologist, Gary England. Approaching Mako. Mark, talk to me. You have to speak very loudly. You, uh, we're here, we're here. Bobby Bell. This thing is warm to funnel. You're probably watching it, aren't you? Okay, it's getting ready to touch down, I guarantee you. Oh, it's touched down on the ground. Oh, this is a nice funnel. Storm trackers like Valcaster are invaluable. You can look out there with radar and you, you say, gosh, we have, a, we have a mesocyclone, we have a hook echo, but you don't know if you have a tornado on the ground. That's the reason these storm trackers are so valuable. Val is so valuable. He's always right there, and we can say, Val, what do you have? He'll say, I have a wall cloud, I have a funnel cloud, I have a tornado. So we use them for ground truthing. We've changed locations now. We're following it. I can see transformer flashes, power flashes. It's, uh, it's now less than a mile, probably a half to three quarters of a mile south, southeast of us. It looks like to me it's trying to cross the highway south of Dover. Now, the way it's going... Over years of live broadcasting as part of the chase team, Val has learned to respect Gary's judgment about the potential for severe weather. Ever since I started, all I can remember Gary saying is, you know, Val, uh, Oklahoma City is overdue for a big tornado. One of these days, we're going to get the big one come through. You know, we're right in the middle of Tornado Alley, and it's just inevitable it's going to happen. That inevitable day did finally dawn on May 3rd, 1999. As the Storm Prediction Center tracks severe storms by radar, the day was to prove the ultimate test of the life-saving value of tornado chasing. On this particular day, we had actually, throughout the day, thought there was a greater risk of severe thunderstorms than tornadoes. Uh, at about 4 o'clock, the first thunderstorm uh, developed about 80 miles southwest of Oklahoma City. It was weak, but based on the environmental conditions, based on how unstable it was and on the, the wind shear, he decided to issue a tornado watch. Gary, watching some strong storms in the southwest part of our state. Let's get the update right now. Gary. And we have a situation uh, that's, you know, fairly dangerous. Storms are in intensifying very rapidly. Um, explosive thunderstorm development and tornadoes are possible. These storms, some of them already have circulations. We have storm chasers all around them. No sign of any tornadoes at the moment. As conditions worsened, the station suspended normal programming to follow the developing storms and issue live tornado warnings. The station's weather studio became the nerve center handling reports from tornado chasers all over the state. At the heart of the chase operation was Val Castor. Tornado is approximately three and a half miles west of the rail. Uh, it's getting bigger. Uh, the funnel goes all the way to the ground now. Right now is probably about 25 to 50 yards wide at the ground. It's a very narrow tornado. Uh, it's, it's not very big at the surface, but I'll guarantee you it's real intense at the surface. I mean, it's spinning really, really fast. Well, I'm going to get ready to tell you exactly where it is. We've got a road that goes right up behind it. At the start of the chase, Val Castor had positioned himself southwest of Oklahoma City. He was now chasing the tornado straight toward the metropolitan area. There's a lot of open country in here. This thing is major. This thing is a major tornado right now. We've got a very strong circulation to the ground. Uh, we've got lots of debris flying around right now. We are about a half a mile from the actual circulation on the ground. And uh, it's a very narrow funnel, but it's rotating very strongly, Gary. Oh my gosh, it just hit something. A thousand feet above, Ranger 9 pilot Leroy Tatum was beaming back live aerial pictures of the storm's progress. The 
For mile after mile, Val Castor stuck fast to the tornado's track. I, mean, I don't see any uh, structures right now in the direct path of it, but I wouldn't want to be in the path of it. We're about a mile from the town, so we're going to have to move on down the road. Okay, uh, is the wraparound coming out? No, it's blowing out a little bit to the left. What's happening? I don't see any wraparound coming behind it at all. I don't see any wraparound precip. We've got great visibility where we're at. If you haven't gone to Cellar Base, but you really need to go now. This is a huge circulation. From Ranger 9. Okay. Yep, tornado, uh, they have, the Ranger 9 has tornado about the west, about three miles west of uh, Chickasha. Yeah. Radar revealed clear pictures of the storm's track. Uh, east of Gracemont, Hoger, Union City area. But tornado touchdowns could only be verified by chasers on the ground. It looks like it's up the golf ball side. We got a funnel on the ground right now, right hand side. Tornado on the ground. Debris ground. cloud, debris cloud. There it is. Multiple vortex tornado on the ground. We're in a really hilly area. We can only see it when we get to the top of the hill. Now this, the movement. The movement, I'm going to put it about 30 miles an hour. Okay. Here, we're about a half a mile from it again. Um, like, oh, we're getting uh, leaves falling out of the sky right now around us. Okay. What an intense circulation, Gary. Yes, sir. This thing has a very intense circulation. Keep talking to me. Val, yeah, keep talking. Gary, we got visual of it. It's only about a half a mile down the road from us. It is uh, definitely a wedge. The storm grew to awesome proportions. Val Castor was using all his chasing skills to stay close enough to report on the tornado's movements, but positioned to keep himself and Amy out of danger. Oh, this thing is large, Gary. No, let's go back. I'm just going to read you the time of arrivals, okay? We have a large, wedge-shaped, multiple vortex tornado on the ground west of Chickasha. By now, the chase reports and the live pictures had made it clear that this was a killer tornado. It could affect the burden area, basically, if, you know, it's almost there. Large Passing the chaser's reports onto viewers, Gary England stressed that running away or hiding underground were the only options for survival. With this tornado, you need to be below ground level. Uh, you folks, it is moving over North Chickasha, Port Amber, the circulation is about six miles across. It's a huge damage path. Near the community of Lawton, still southwest of Oklahoma City, the tornado grew to an F3 with wind speeds of up to 206 miles per hour. As well as the television station team, other less experienced chasers were still pursuing the monstrous cloud. Many had never seen such a tornado before. Amateur chasers Rick Jarvis and Chad Lawson found themselves driving through a rainstorm into serious danger. Oh! Ricky! Oh, God, look at that! Ricky? Okay, hang on. Look, 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 another one! Another tornado! Two tornadoes! One, two, three! Good chicken, Shay. You're moving south when you turn around. Look at out there. Rick, that's moving right at us. We gotta get out of here. Because we're thinking they can drop anywhere at any time right now. Southwest. Turn around. We're at the northeast side of Chickasha. Looking to the north, we have a wedge-shaped tornado. Could be in the range of 200 to 250 miles an hour. Go, 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 go! I gotta beat. I can beat it along this way. No, Ricky, no, that's coming too close to us. Get on that side of this highway now. Ricky, oh my gosh. Ready? Ready? I'm getting nervous. This is bad. Look at that. Look at that. Rick, you just Ready? go. Ready? Yes. Be careful. Be careful. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Be careful, Ricky. This is not good. Right here. Right here. We're all right. We're all right. Yeah. Another stovepipe uh, tornado okay. coming down. Uh, Gary, Gary, Gary. Yes. Those red lights are the Chickasha Airport lights right there. The red lights are on the south side of the airport right now. Go! 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 Finally realizing the danger, arguing chasers Rick and Chad spun their car around and escaped from the scene. We see some red flashing lights. That is the Chickasha yeah. Airport. Reference in the middle of the screen. It is north of the Chickasha Airport. Major damage at the airport. I repeat, major damage at the airport. It's leveled entire buildings. It's leveled entire buildings. We have a new tornado on the ground. 
down Gary Mark Hill. Where? Boone, Oklahoma. Where? Where? Tornado warning with Where? Where? Further tornadoes were now touching down across the state. Reports were coming in from other members of the Channel 9 chase team who were following the new tornadoes in the outbreak. Mark, I'm going to give it northeast at, uh, at 30. Is that about right? That's correct, Gary. Continues to move northeast. Okay, you still on the ground? Yes, it is. Okay, we have two tornadoes on the ground at the moment. Gary, the tornado continues to move. It's very ragged. Continues with multiple tunnels around the main circulation with quite a bit of debris rising at times from the funnel base itself. This is a storm that you need to be below ground level. It's extremely dangerous. As you look at this uh, tornado from Ranger 9 Live, uh, we have it uh, right along Interstate 44, not too far from the toll booth, moving northeast at about 30 miles per hour. Val, talk to me again. We see a large wedge tornado. Evidently, the circulation... Say again, Val? Evidently, the circulation is bigger than what we thought. It is a huge circulation. It's throwing debris uh, a mile around the tornado. In other words, a mile outside of the circulation, dropping big chunks of debris. Let's go to XL very quickly, and uh, we're going very quickly here. And this is a classic uh, tornadic hook echo, strong mesocyclone. It's becoming totally rain wrapped. It's uh, covering parts of I 44, moving into Newcastle. It's very dedicated. Conceivably, be an F4. We don't know for sure. With an F4, you need to be below ground. But once again, a strong tornado continues. The greatest danger still came from the monster funnel being chased by Amy and Val Castor. We're on 149 Street right now. Uh, North South Street is Portland. Oh, this is crazy. Man, we've got debris everywhere. The tornado ground its way toward the city's southern suburbs, with Val and Amy finally having to give up their chase, unable to drive through blocked roads. With Val cut off, Gary England continued to broadcast pictures from the chase helicopter. Astonishingly, through all the mayhem, the mobile radar trucks from Oklahoma University had also carried on with their chase. The scientists were now so close to the major tornado that their dual Doppler sets were recording unprecedented radar images. 2.2 kilometers. Oh, boy. Two kilometers. We feel like it's coming towards us and doing anything stupid. Stop and do a U-turn. All right. Well, you see a lot of debris now. I don't want to get into the debris. Yeah. Okay, I stop there. Oh, I can go to this picnic area. Yeah, turn there. Boy, there. Finally, the team pulled off the road and concentrated on obtaining the best possible data from both of their trucks. They recorded the highest wind speed ever known. But for the scientists, the true value of this ultimate chase is yet to be evaluated. The data will be analyzed for many months. In Oklahoma City, the chase became more fragmented as even experienced chasers were cut off by the intense destruction. Yeah, let's go. Ranger 
Cruiser 9, we can still use the huge damage pack. Classic uh, tornadic hook echo strong measure cyclone. It's become a totally rain wrap. Uh, it's coming from the ice to the floor. We can get the blue castle. I'm going to pop up here in the tail next to video, okay? It's going to be moving we'll in the southwest Oklahoma City very shortly. Mobile homes, pre-band effects homes will not survive this. Many wood frames homes will not survive this particular storm. There goes. Oh my gosh. KCW aviation to weather turret watching two very strong rotations. One uh, very close to the southern part of Tinker Air Force Base and the other out to the west. Uh, just preparing to cross the uh, Cato Grady County line. Uh, a little bit south of Highway 37. Give me an ambulance. Give me an coming this way. I've got I've got cars that have been torn off the road here. 76 tornadoes touched down on May 3rd, 1999. 42 people lost their lives. But without the media warnings, many more would have died. Damage is absolutely incredible, and Ranger 9 is following the damage path in the far distance. If you look uh, on television, you'll see a huge tornado, power line flashes. Okay, you folks. Those warnings were only made possible by a combination of ever-advancing radar technology and ever more skillful chasers on the ground. As I looked at that thing, and I remember thinking, this is happening, and I can't really believe it's happening. It was really surreal. It was just unbelievable that there was this thing that appeared to be connected to the ground and the sky at the same time. This thing was just goring the earth. It was like it was part of the atmosphere and part of the earth. It was unbelievable. It was a gut-wrenching experience. 